Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson along with Andrew Bone. Breaking news, Ja'Cory Brooks has committed to the Alabama Crimson Tide. I'm here with our recruiting analyst, Andrew Bone, to break it all down. Bone, big commitment with Ja'Cory Brooks headed to the Alabama Crimson Tide. This is the number 15 overall player in the nation. Uh, what does it mean for the Crimson Tide? Well, it's huge. I mean, in, in so many aspects, because, you know, everybody's been talking about how Alabama's recruiting classes, uh, you know, hasn't really – doesn't really have a lot of firepower just yet, and, and it just uh, it just added a big one today. And uh, and Ja'Cory Brooks, the uh, number fifteen overall player in the Rivals one hundred, number two overall receiver in the co uh, country. I mean, just a humongous commitment for the Crimson Tide. You got to think that uh, that Bryce Young's uh, smiling a little bit bigger uh, today, knowing that uh, that Ja'Cory Brooks and uh, AJ Hall, uh, you know, two elite receivers from the uh, from the Sunshine State are committed so uh commitment number four for Alabama is a uh, yeah, humongous one today in uh, in getting a kid out of South Florida um obviously we know that Alabama's had a tremendous amount of success recruiting players uh in South Florida you know really in the whole, in the entire uh, state of Florida but uh you know really getting elite wide receivers I mean we've seen three uh first round NFL draft picks uh from Alabama uh, who have come from South Florida uh, at the receiver position in Amari Cooper and uh, Jerry Judy and, uh, and Calvin Ridley. And now you get a guy who is a, uh, a special, special talent in, uh, in Ja'Cory Brooks who, uh, to just uh, you know, fall in line with that tradition. Let's talk about Brooks as a player. I mean, six foot three, 180 pounds. Um, watch this highlight film. Very impressive. Um, he's a guy who just is plain and simple electric and can also provide kind of that, you know, vertical threat being that he is six foot three. Um, what do you like about Ja'Cory Brooks as an overall player? Yeah, you know, he's a, uh, you know, obviously a great offensive weapon. You know, he's a, uh, you know, he's a number one, you know, target for uh, for just about anybody. And uh, he ended up, uh, you know, just under 1,300 yards receiving, uh, 17 touchdowns during his junior season. And uh, you know, just an incredible year for him. But, uh, you know, definitely a guy that, uh, you know, he can take it the distance from just about anywhere on the field. Uh, you know, great route runner. Um, you know, kind of reminds me a little bit, uh, I was watching his film uh, this morning and reminds me a little bit of uh, Devontae Smith, uh, just the way that he, uh, you know, he runs routes, you know, his, you know, his one cut and, and, and he goes up the field. I mean, just really impressive overall in his film. Um, you know, hate that I haven't been able to get a chance to, uh, to see him in person. And uh, you know, I don't know if we'll, we'll be able to get to see him in person uh, before he gets to Alabama, but, uh, but obviously a, a tremendous talent, you know, somebody that Alabama highly coveted uh, in this class. I mean, and we talked about this before. Receiver was such a priority position uh, this year in 2021. And, you know, losing two first-round NFL draft picks, uh, potentially losing two more first-round draft picks next year in, in Jalen Waddell and, uh, and, and Devontae Smith. And, you know, you're starting to reload. You're starting to get some really big-time weapons uh, in this class with Brooks and, uh, and Hall. And, you know, they're still looking for a few more. Bone, well, when I look at, um, you know, the backstory of Brooks' recruitment, it was Florida and Alabama, and it kind of kept us on the edge towards the end. Um, talk about this recruitment process and who spearheaded the recruiting effort to land um, such a high-quality player in Ja'Cory Brooks. Yeah, it was kind of interesting. Uh, you know, probably about, I would say, um, a month, month and a half ago, uh, I saw a story that said the top contenders for him – and the top two were actually Alabama and LSU. And, and I had really not heard a ton about him. You know, I knew Alabama was recruiting him. I knew that, that they had an offer to him. But I you know, really wasn't sure how much interest, um, you know, he had in Alabama. He hadn't visited Tuscaloosa uh, this spring. You know, wasn't able to get up to campus. But, um, you know, started doing a little bit more digging. And probably, I would say, three or four weeks ago, um, you know, I posted on, the, uh, on our recruiting board on BamaInsider.com uh, to really keep an eye on him, that I was hearing some you know, really positive things. Um, it was kind of, you know, a lot of people were saying, you know, that's a new name. You know, what are you hearing? Uh, you know, that's just out of nowhere. And I said, well, you know, keep a close eye on him because I, I'm hearing that, you know, he could easily end up at Alabama. And then over the course of the last probably two weeks, we were really starting to hear, uh, you know, a lot of talk about Florida, a lot of talk about Florida. Everybody was saying, all right, well, he's going to make a decision here pretty soon. It's all Florida. Well, Obviously, that was a smoke screen, and uh, and he announced for Alabama today. But really, probably over the course of the last, I'd say, 24 hours is when 
you know, we really started to hear very strongly it was going to be Alabama. And uh, uh, Charles Huff, Alabama running backs coach, uh, was a lead recruiter for him. But, you know, there's a lot of people that, that recruited him. I mean, you got uh, Coach Sark, uh, you know, Holman Wiggins, the wide receivers coach. Nick Saban spent a lot of time recruiting him as well. But, but Charles Huff, uh, you know, big win for him. Uh, you know, and, and this isn't the only kid from, some, from South Florida that Alabama is heavily recruiting this year. I mean, they're, they're recruiting uh, a lot of guys, including, uh, including Jason Marshall, uh, who's a big-time talent uh, yeah, defensive back that, they're hope to, uh, that they hope to land as well. Well, so Alabama has two wide receivers on board. Could there potentially be a third? And I know you've talked about this before. Uh, Brian Thomas is someone that in Alabama certainly likes out of Louisiana. Um, talk about an, a couple of other key targets. I know you've talked about them before, but Brian Thomas, is, is he still, um, you know, a priority target along with, um, is it Christian Leary, I believe? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, this year's class, they're probably going to try to sign four wide receivers. Um, and I, I've seen five thrown out there, but I, I, I can't see them signing five. I think it's going to be four. Um, they've got two on board. So, you know, you're trying to find two more guys. You know, and maybe if somebody really elite is still available down the road and, and they have room, you know, maybe they go for a fifth. But, uh, but Brian Thomas has certainly been one of Alabama's top targets for, uh, for a very long time. It continues to say that, uh, he plans on waiting until uh, to the Under Armour All-America game to make a decision. So that's going to be several months down the road. But, you know, does this potentially, you know, make him push that decision date up? Because, you know, if they only have two more spots, you know, you, some, some of these guys may want to go ahead and jump on board. But, you know, Christian Leary out of Orlando, certainly a, a big-time target, could end up being an Alabama-Florida battle. Uh, again, for him, a lot of people have assumed that it's Oklahoma, Florida, uh, with Alabama in there. But, you know, could in could easily end up being an Alabama Florida battle. Uh, Alabama just offered Xavier Worthy, a uh, you know really talented wide receiver from uh, from the West Coast. Uh, he got offered this week, and there's some other guys that are out there uh, that they're heavily recruiting. That you know we're continuing to watch a little bit to see if maybe they'll make a visit to Tuscaloosa this summer. Uh, you know Troy Franklin, who's on on the West Coast, another guy that they really like. Uh, Destin Pazon, uh, also out of Louisiana, uh, somebody that they're re heavily recruiting as well. Malcolm Johnson out of Virginia. Um, you know, there's some receivers in the state of uh, Georgia that they really like. Uh, so there's a Jaden Thomas out of Georgia, excuse me. Um, you know, definitely a lot of guys that are out there. I mean, you know, that's a good problem to have, that you have a lot of options uh, and, and not just one or two and hoping to get uh, three or four of them. So you know, I think that they're really excited about the class that they have right now. And, uh, and the potential that it, that it can be uh, down the road if they can get a few more of those guys. All right, and lastly, Bone, um, entering uh, Friday, May 8th, Alabama's class was ranked number 60 on Rivals.com, um, landing the number 15 overall player in the country. Obviously, um, you know, a start of a little bit momentum. Are we going to start to see uh, Nick Saban and his coaching staff start to make a push as we head into the summertime? I know a lot of people are panicking. We talked about it before, but this certainly is a gigantic get for the Crimson Tide. What, what type of momentum going forward does this add to the class of 2021? Yeah, I've been saying for a while that if Alabama can get you know, six, seven commitments, uh, you know, right before the start of the summer, that would be, uh, you know, that'd be in terms of having that many on their commitment list uh, right before the start of the summer, that'd be really good considering, uh, you know, we've been you know, kind of sitting at three for a long time. Uh, you get a big one today at Ja'Cory Brooks. Next Friday, Kane Williams, um, you know, one of the top safeties in the country, uh, announcing his decision. I, you know, as of right now, we're forecasting him to Alabama. Uh, that could be five commitments for Alabama, um, unless somebody else decides to pop pop up, pop in in the next uh, week or so. Um, but yeah, I think it's some great momentum. Um, you know, and they've got to build this momentum. I mean, getting the number 15 overall player in the country. Uh, you know, number two receiver on board today. Uh, that certainly helps. And, uh, you know, Alabama is certainly going to be the talk of, uh, of the, uh, you know, the rec recruiting world this weekend. All right. For more recruiting information on Alabama Crimson Tide football, be sure and head on over to BamaInsider.com and think about becoming a loyalty club member right here on our YouTube channel. Of course, many ways to subscribe and to support the business of BamaInsider.com. He's Andrew Bone. I'm Kyle Henderson. We'll catch you soon back at BamaInsider.com.